Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. 2018 is here, and if your New Year's resolution is to quit smoking, you're in good company. It is a popular goal, and many, many people succeed. My next guests are Donna Waninsky. She's the Director of Tobacco Control and Public Policy for the American Lung Association in Wisconsin, and Amanda Stingle. She is the coordinator of special events for the American Lung Association. Good morning, Good ladies. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's really exciting to have and you happy here. birthday, Amanda. <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday, yes. The American Lung Association, uh, needless to say, has been helping people quit smoking for many, many years. So if you would tell us more about what it is you do, Donna. I do primarily government relations and communications. I work to pass laws that help people breathe easier. I was involved 10 years ago, I hate to date myself, with the Clean Indoor Air Act, which prevented, or which, which made it possible for everybody to breathe clean air in their workplaces, in public places like restaurants and taverns. And uh, so that's, that's the, the lion's share of my job. Mm -hmm. And um, just other things in tobacco control and communications, like doing interviews like this. Yes, and you guys, as you said, support policies and funding for federal, state, and local programs that not only help tobacco users quit, but also prevents kids and adults from starting from in the exactly. first place. Because exactly. really, uh, we all know it is an addictive product, and then there's marketing out there that for many years, from goodness, the 50s and 40s, back then made it very chic and fabulous. But I do think that uh, organizations like yours and others have really gotten the message across that smoking is really not that cool. I think so too, and I think if you look at the numbers, the, st the statistics bear it out. The adult smoking rate in Wisconsin is now under 20%. 10, 20 years ago, it was probably close to 30, 40, even 50% mm -hmm. way back, if you go back maybe into the 50s and 60s. Kids smoking rates, high school, when I first started at the Lung Association, was over 30%, and now it's down in the ballpark somewhere of around 8%. So yeah, I think, I think the country as a whole has done a really good job at getting kids to not start smoking. The kids have heard that message. They have experienced a lot of their own family members, grandparents, mm -hmm. parents that they have lost to lung disease. Um, but the, the, the threat that's really on the horizon right now is while that's the good news, we're seeing more and more of those kids and kids who would never have touched a cigarette in their life, but they're starting to vape. Yes, so we're gonna talk a little bit about yeah. that uh, uh, further in this conversation, but uh, we always have to remind everybody that tobacco <clears throat> use remains the leading cause a leading of cause. preventable death and disease in the U.S., killing close to half a million people each year. Right, when over Wisconsin, it's that. a little over 7,000 people every year wow. who still die of tobacco. Mm. So let's talk about some of these programs to help people actually stop. So, and you're gonna have to, uh, sheets, I don't know, today's your birthday, you know what? <laughs> Uh, 29, 25, something yeah, 25. like that. Yes, yeah, so you'll have to help Donna and I understand Sounds really good. where, um, you know, young people are when it comes to stuff like the hookahs and the vaping and things of that nature and how it has really become so popular. But first I want to really make sure we get out the information about these uh, cessation classes that you guys offer to help people stop smoking. We've been very fortunate this year. We've gotten a very generous grant from the Anthem Foundation mm -hmm. that is allowing us to offer free smoking cessation programming to anyone who wants to quit. It's in our Freedom From Smoking program, which we consider to be the gold standard of tobacco cessation smoke. And I'm, I'm saying tobacco cessation because it can be for somebody who wants to stop chew or, mm -hmm. or any kind of uh, nicotine addiction. And as I said, we have some programs scheduled up for this year, they're coming up, and they are free of charge, again, thanks to this Anthem grant. And all people have to do to see if they can uh, get into one of these upcoming programs is to call our office at 1-800-LUNG-USA. I will list the caveat that most of them are primarily around the greater Milwaukee area, but certainly within your viewership. Yes, indeed, and you guys do a lot of outstanding uh, special events throughout the year, and one is going to be uh, celebrating its 10th anniversary it is, this year, yes. right? So tell us about the Fight for Air Climb. Yeah, the Fight for Air Climb, sponsored by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, is gonna be on Saturday, March 10th, at the mm -hmm. U.S. Bank Center downtown. 
as you said, it's our 10 year anniversary, so we're so excited. Um, our participants climb from the bottom of the U.S. Bank Center all the way up to the top and are in a 360 degree view of Milwaukee and Lake Michigan. So it's a view that you don't get to see too often in your yeah. life. Um, and we're expecting over 3,000 participants this year, so we're really excited. Last year we raised over $700,000, which is the number one climb across the nation, which is awesome. That is. Um, and we're planning to beat that goal again this year. Yes. I don't remember seeing you there, though. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I think it's an, an amazing event. And then I hear about these stairs. How yeah. Many, how many floors? <laughs> It's I'm like, like I'll, I'll never make it. What, what is it? How many flights? So it's 1,034 steps, 47 <laughs> floors. So it sounds like a lot, but it only takes about 13 minutes on average. Did you say 13? 13 minutes on average. Really? So it's really doable. It's not like running a marathon when you're going all day. It's just 15 minutes out of your day and you're done. Well, and I'm amazing. sorry, Andrea. Anyone who is a former <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks cheerleader. <laughs> And That's do the true. Climb. <laughs> I know. I am going to have to be there this year because yeah, I say be. every year, I'm coming, I'm coming. And especially when you look at uh, firefighters, oh my gosh. Uh, they have on their full equipment when they yep. come to this event and they take that climb, yep. which really says just how amazing they are at being able to do the work that they do. Yeah, exactly. That's additional 60 pounds. And one of the firefighters is able to do it in five minutes and 36 seconds. Uh -huh. It's insane. <laughs> but he can do it that so anybody can do it. Our oldest climber is 86 and our youngest climber is 6. So okay. we really have a wide age range of climbers I doing it. I have no excuses. Nope. Right? No excuses. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to, uh, well, there's also, is there a long walk? Do we do that in this area? Yep, we yeah. do a long first walk. The date still did to be determined, but it'll be the last Sunday of September, the first Sunday okay. of October, and that's at the Milwaukee County Zoo. So we've got some time yep. there. <laughs> uh, but March will be here before you know exactly, it. Exactly, It's yep. just right there in front of us. But we were talking about this vaping scenario, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure people who follow the news and uh, kind of look at the internet and things of that nature we are hearing more and more about vaping and it's growing tremendously to the point where there are schools who are saying you know what the devices they use for vaping are banned but it's tricky because these devices sometimes look like little hard drives mm -hmm. and uh, even fountain pens yep. so it's it's one of those things that has become an issue They've become very deceptive. The initial ones, and, and we still in the industry probably still refer to them as e-cigarettes, mm -hmm. because the very original models looked like cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And they were meant to mimic the smoking activity, um, the hand to mouth, the, the feeling like you're actually smoking a cigarette when you're vaping. The industry has gotten much more savvy in the meantime. And as you said, you can get them now to look like a pen, so a parent or teacher may not even recognize it as a vaping device. They can look like a, a jump drive. They can look like a, I mean, you can get a, a vaping device in almost any kind of a shape these days. Yeah, and they have like stores that are specifically, oh, right. you know, kind of dedicated to vaping. So if you could help us understand, uh, it's a, a chemical or liquid, yep. and they can get the liquid in all these different flavors. Exactly, and that's the whole issue is there's so many flavors, so it tastes like candy, and mm -hmm. high schoolers are still interested in eating candy, so that seems like something fun to do, and wow. it tastes good, so why not try it? And they also, because they're candy, they, they think that they're harmless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, if, in fact, two recent studies came out, one from the state, they do an annual report on kids' habits and be risky behaviors, mm -hmm. but then there was also a national study that just came out um, in late December, and it showed the same thing, pretty much it's mirroring what's going on in the state, that the smoking rates are going out, down, but the vaping rates are going up. And one of the biggest reasons that the kids say that they use it is, oh, well, I'm just inhaling these flavors. Yeah. And they're not. But you don't even know what's in this chemical that, or the flavoring, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. you're inhaling it. And uh, that's the scariest part, I think, yeah. because um, the health risk and benefits of all of this still being evaluated. And some researchers are looking at a link between gum disease, which ultimately leads to tooth loss. And I think if young people knew that, yeah. that yeah. is enough to kind of like stop you in your tracks. It's not cool yeah. to lose your teeth at an early age. You know, if nothing else, the vast majority of them still have nicotine because the purpose of it is to be able to use something when you can't smoke. Mm. So they still contain nicotine, which is very bad for adolescent and high school student age brains. 
Uh, and then as you alluded to just a little while ago, the flavorings themselves, they contain a chemical called diacetyl, and diacetyl has been very definitely linked in irre to irreparable lung damage. Mm. Mm. So, with you being a millennial, yes. uh, do you have uh, a group of friends? Well, not to put you on the spot <laughs> that way, but I know a lot of people who go to hookah lounges because it's just like a cool thing to do. Definitely. And I was visiting Atlanta a while back, and I kid you not, it seemed like there was a hookah lounge <laughs> on every other block. So, it too is very popular. Do you know people who? do the hookah yeah. and that's kind of flavored Definitely. smoke too, right? Exactly. A lot of my, not a lot, but some of my <laughs> friends do do hookah and mm -hmm. again, it's a mindset that that's not going to harm you. It's just breathing in this flavored, it's a fun setting where you're being social with your friends. You don't think, you hear that it might have um, tobacco products in it, but you don't really think, oh, I could get lung cancer, but really lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of men and women and it's on the rise. And, tobacco and e-cigarettes and hookah are all part of the issue. <sighs> and anytime you breathe in anything that's burning, mm -hmm. any kind of a combustible product, whether it's an herbal product, which, which is really the only kind of hookah that's allowed in Wisconsin because ah. of the smoke-free air law, we can't have hookah lounges that, mm -hmm. that burn tobacco. Um, but they think that it's safe again because of the flavorings yeah yeah and i'm sure whoever is you know coming up with this idea and the manufacturing of it all are well aware of that They're very so aware of it. um this is the interesting thing despite the recent roadblocks by the fda and government this industry as we've said has continued to grow uh, from a 20 million dollar industry in 2008 to a two billion dollar industry in 2016 and i even read that uh by the time they tally up the whole year of 2017 it might even be at 10 billion dollars that's crazy yeah that's it's crazy. it's the new substitute for tobacco smoking and so you have a yeah. whole nother issue on your hands at yeah. the american lung association yeah. yeah and adults our focus is always on the kids adults are free to make their own choices mm -hmm. we certainly discourage them from breathing in anything other than fresh clean air but it's about keeping the kids from trying these products and again getting hooked on them yeah. because of the nicotine. And we also know that a lot of these kids that start with e-cigarettes then go on to be smokers or dual users where they use cigarettes when they when they can use cigarettes, mm -hmm. but they use the e-cigarettes when they're in public and places where smoking is prohibited. Yeah, and so uh, of course one of your main goals is also to make people aware of the warning signs of lung disease. Yes. So uh, if people have chronic coughs, shortness of breath, they're coughing up blood, chronic chest pain, those type of symptoms, yeah. contact your doctor Good. because with everything, early detection is key, right? Definitely. And if people don't want to go to their doctor, they just aren't, or they don't think it's that serious, they can call the toll free number, the 1 800 Lung USA, and that's staffed by nurses who can tell you if you need to go see your doctor. Yeah, that's a free, a free um, helpline, and it's staffed by medical professionals. So, I mean, they can answer questions about lung diseases that I've never even heard of. Yeah, and of course, we just encourage everybody to go to your website to find out about anything that we've talked about, but especially if they're trying to stop smoking for 2018 mm -hmm. you've got a long list of programs and services to help them do that yes we do and that that website address it's one eight uh, sorry it is www.lung.org okay simple as that thank you thank both you for being thank here you. happy new year to happy you year. happy new year happy birthday happy birthday <laughs> yes you. donna <laughs> Winitz is the director of tobacco control and public policy for the american lung association in wisconsin and amanda stingo she is the coordinator of special events for ala for more information on anything that we have talked about again you can visit lung.org or call 1-800-LUNG-USA that's 1-800-586 4872. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues in Milwaukee. And again, Happy New Year.